Mm -hmm. All right, problem one. You know, a particle moves along a, moves along a straight line so that at time t is greater than or equal to zero, its acceleration is given by the function a of t equals four t. At time t equals zero, the velocity of the particle is four, and the position of the particle is one. Which of the following is an expression for the position of the particle at time t equal, t is greater than or equal to zero? Okay, so if you just um, remember and recognize that. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity, and velocity is the derivative of position. And so that means that acceleration is also the second derivative of position. Sorry for the messy writing. So one way to go about this is just find the second derivative of these functions and see which of those would give you 4t. Um, that would probably be the fastest way. So the first one, if you take the first the first one, you take the first derivative, you would get um the three is a cancel, you would get a let me go down here. 2t two 2t two squared plus 4. Take it again, and you get 4t. So right away, the answer is going to be A. And you can check the other ones just to see that you won't get 4t. But again, um, since we're looking for the position function, we want to find which of these would have its second derivative be equal to A of t, which is 4t. All right, problem two, we have a slope field. And which of these would the slope field match up to? Now, with these problems, there's not like a formula or like a a guaranteed method to always solve them. It's more like strategies and techniques. When you go into differential equations, if you do, you'll learn about the the joy of studying like one differential equation for for you know for hours and hours and hours and still not getting an answer. But anyways, um, over here they just want you to understand that the, that that these are um, slope line the line are like you know slope lines. So these, these little line segments represent the slopes or the derivatives at certain points. So if we like analyze this, we can kind of see it's like, if there's a line somewhat here where it goes from being positive to neg negative being below this line and positive to being above. That'll be the line what y equals negative x, right? Yeah, y equals negative x. So along this line, one strategy I know we is where you want to find where the tangent lines are zero or the slope lines are zero. It looks like it's gonna be yeah, it looks like it's probably gonna be around this line. Oh yeah, it is. You see along the diagonal here, you see these tangent, this is a very bad draw. Along the diagonal, all the tangent lines are horizontal. And so that means that um, if we check, you can brute force it, of course, but it's gonna be this or this one, but it's gonna be this one because um, when you when you add them, you get positives, which is up here. And when you add two negatives, you get something more negative. Here would be the opposite. It would be like, if it was D, it would be um, kind of like along the line Y equals X. So the answer is C. And again, I'm not gonna brute force it and just prove it because um, don't spend too much time on these ones because they're, again, it's just one question. So hope that helps. Problem three, the graph of a piecewise linear function is given above. Evaluate the integral from three to eight of F prime of X dx. Okay, so if you remember what an integral is, um, you want to find the antiderivative of whatever's in here. But since we're given the derivative, the antiderivative of the derivative is just the original function. So this would just end up giving you f of x. And so you're going to evaluate f of x from 3 to 8. So we essentially have f of 8 minus f of 3 which would be 
zero minus two looks like or negative two and so the answer is b problem four integral from one to five of x minus one over x dx let's just break this up like so so we have x over x minus one over x dx And from there, this is just one, we can have x, the antiderivative of one over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x. So our expression will be x minus the natural log of x, and we're gonna go from one to five. Evaluating this, we'll have, we'll get five minus the natural log of five, minus one minus the natural log of one. Which will give us five minus the natural log of five. Minus one and natural log of one is just zero. So minus one minus zero. So in here we just have minus one. So we just have five minus one. So we have four minus the natural log of five as our answer. So the answer will be B. All right. Number five, two times the natural log of X over E X to minus one. Oh, the limit as X goes to one of, of this expression. So we always want to first try direct substitution. So we just plug in one first. So we get two times the natural log of one over e to the one minus one, which will be two times zero. So we get zero over looks like zero. Yeah, zero over zero. So we have an indeterminate form. So when we when this happens, we're gonna um, use L'Hopital's rules. L hospitals rule, which means we just take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. So we get two times one over X over E to the X, which just happens to be two over E to the X times X. And then we try it again. Then we plug one in again and see if it works. So plug in one into here, we'll get two over e to the one times one, which is just two over e. And that's our answer, our answer is a. All right. 